Yeah, hi YouTube. Um, it's Michael, and uh, today I'll cover a topic that is that might be very interesting for some of you. It's um, in-system debugging of um, an Atmega 128 or any other AVR processor using the AVR oh, JTAG ICE MK2. Uh, this is this little gadget here. Um, well, I encountered several difficulties and uh, well it's uh, proved to be a little a little bit unnerving but um, well it works so far you see that um, there is an output here which has this connector which is the JTAG connector which is a 10 pin connector you can use the MK2 to program the AVR using JTAG this is possible, but you can also do it with ISP, which does not work properly uh, for me anyway, with our AVR dude. Well, there's probably some issue I haven't resolved yet, um, but um, well. Currently, the AVR is running a program which is currently a running light. Well, you won't see that it is a running light right now because it's so fast that the naked eye can see it. Uh, because there is no delay or anything in the program. This is intentional right now because um, I don't want to end up doing some break of the program being in the delay routine. So, And it, it also proves some very interesting... Uh, can can show you some interesting facts about uh, stopping a program, which I'll do right now. So, currently the program is running, right? It's running in full speed. And uh, this is the debug window, DDD. Um, well, actually, in in the background, there is running a debug server uh, with Everize. This is the software tool that translates or writes the backend of the MK2 to the DDD or GDB debugger, which is used here. So you see that this is a very simple program. It has the status, which is this 8 or 16 bits. Well, I made it 16 bit up, obviously. But, um. This is the program. It always outputs on port D, the inverted uh, value of status, and then shifts it to the left. And this is why it is 16 bit, because I need to know the overflow. Well, once it is shifted far enough, it, it resets the status variable to 1. So, let's. This is the toolbox for the debugger, and I can now do interrupt the program. Did this right now, and what you see now, well, it's no longer running. The program stands. And now, we can actually inspect the variables and everything. So, the current value of status is 128, which, in binary notation, is this. So, and this is actually what is displayed right now. Um, you just uh, have to reverse it because this is the least significant bit and this is the most significant bit and in the repre uh, representation in the debugger it's vice versa so but this is what's currently shown you see and it is inverted here because uh, the LEDs are well s uh, switched in a way so a low will light it up and a high will uh, well, shut it down. So we have to in, uh, do this uh, inverse. So I do a single step now, one step of the program, and uh, so this is right. We are now here, and it resetted it to one. This is what happens. It checks. Well, if we have to reset it, we do this and this is what it did in this step so now the value is 1 but still you see that the display isn't updated yet it's still in the old position so to another step and in this step it will update the display let's do the step so yeah now we have the step and you see now it's set to 1 and <laughs> you can do even more with uh, such a debugger you can say I can set the value manually and I can say well let's cheat it and the next step go from 8 
So now the variable has changed to 8 manually. I do another step. Well, it will shift it right away to 16. Uh, say that it will shift it to 16 in the next step, right? So and uh, now it will set the port step. So you see. <laughs> It switched from here to here, which in a normal program it would never do because it will always switch one position, right? So uh, you can monitor variables, you can set breakpoints, you can yeah, well, you can do what you usually can do with a uh, with a debugger, and you can also ins inspect uh, certain things like uh, say mm, the contents of the registers, right? The Edmiga 128 and all other AVRs have 32 from yeah 32 general purpose registers from R0 to R31, and this is the current content of those registers right now. And you can also see the program counter. Well, actually, once I open the dialog, it will use the momentary values of those uh, the registers now. So it won't be updated right now because, the, of course, they're constantly changing. But this is if you stop the program and do this, then this is actually what's right now in the registers. And yeah, it's quite cool. Um, well, this is DDD and it's based on TDB, the debugger, the new debugger. And yeah, let's just uh, say con for continue, which will. Uh, set the program into running mode again, and now it's it's it's, it's very very fast. So if you you use the scope or say a logical analyzer on this port, you could make you could of course again make it visual what's actually happened because it's too fast for the eye. But um, well, I've shown you this just to um, to show you the possibilities uh, of of int system debugging. So this is not a simulation. Uh, this is not simulated in any way, and it's the real program running in the real system. So, and also, also the values that are read into the ports and stuff. That is all the real thing. So, it makes it possible to to inspect and debug uh, a real uh, well program running on the MCU in the in the target system. So, this is what this is all about. Well. Just one word. Uh, it's 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 very mighty, but also it's it has its issues. So it can be a little unnerving in the beginning to set it up and and, and also to get the hang of it, of course. Um, but once it's running, and I think you, you arrange yourself. It, it, of course, uh, say let's interrupt it one more time. already standing still here so now we are here uh, and I do a single step step it is of course a little bit slower uh, yeah this is the step it takes about one two seconds or sometimes um, well depending on the, the number of uh, commands it, it actually has to execute it's, it can be quite slow well, still it is. It has one megahertz of uh, well, the JTAG frequency, but still it can be very slow. But this is, this is some restriction you have to live with because um, the whole communication is done remotely, right? And this is why it is a little slower than you would if you would debug a, a, a system, of, say a process that is running on the local machine and in, and in the speed of this machine. Well, yeah. And maybe one more thing, uh, the whole thing is attached by USB, so it's all done by USB. Yeah, okay, so far all this, thanks for watching.